If you ever lose your way in all of the woodworking journey, there's always a compass plane to guide you. Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. Today we're going to be talking about compass planes. Um, how do you use them? Now I have a video a while ago of restoring this one and bringing it up to shape. I'm not going to be talking as much about how do you restore it. I'm going to be talking more about how to use it, how to actually set it up and function the plane. So to do that, let's actually dive into some of the differences between these two and what they can do. Now for the Stanley 113, there are two basic common types. This is the older one and usually there would be a metal handle here, but I lost that and uh, a friend of mine made this uh, wooden handle for it. And this one actually has a gear on the side that then adjusts the depth of cut. And the lateral adjustment is done by tapping the blade side to side and moving in and out. It's really not a great adjustment method, though they do look really cool with this kind of steampunk look. Uh, it's not a great plane, and if at all possible, if you're going to get it for a user, get a slightly more modern style plane. This one has two screws in the handle, and the adjustments on it are exactly the same as any standard bench plane. With your lateral adjuster, depth of cut, lever cap, it all functions the exact same as a bench plane. It's much easier to use. So if you have a choice between the two, um, get the newer one, whereas the original style is more of the collector's edition. It will treat you well, but you've got to work with it, and sometimes it's not quite as easy. Now, what does a compass plane do? It will put a consistent arc into a piece of wood. This can be very difficult to do with hand tools. Now I'll show you the, the basic method without using the compass plane. Um, but using the compass plane allows you to put that arc in there and give a really nice consistent curve all the way across to it. So a lot of times on the bottom of a stretcher or something like that where you want to add a little bit of detail, remove some weight, an arc like this can be a great way to do it. So what we've got here is on the other side of the board I've drawn another arc on here already with a drawing bow or a bow compass or there's a bunch of different names for these. Um, just putting a consistent curve on there that will match this. Now you have to make sure that that arc is no tighter than the, the radius of your compass plane uh, because if it can't reach down in there well then you, you can't do it with the compass plane. You can do that with a chisel and a spoke shave which I'll show you that in a little bit but basically you want it to be something more of a gradual curve that your compass plane can do. So let's talk about setting up the compass plane. Basically, everything is going to be the exact same as your normal bench plane. Depth of cut, lateral adjustment, tension, the way you sharpen it, checking the mouth. Um, if you're the type of person who eyeballs down the mouth, that may not work for you. I normally test with just feeling it with my finger to see how much of the blade is sticking out. Be careful, don't slice your finger. But you can just lightly feel the blade and know exactly where it's at. The interesting feature on this one is what is the angle you want to put on there. Now there is this marking here of 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way down to 0 that kind of give you a rough idea of where it should be. And so theoretically that is perfectly flat, though I know on this one it's off a little bit and there's a little bit of slop in the gears, so don't worry about those numbers so much. What we want to actually start with is we want to put it to the radius and we want to make it a little bit flatter than our radius. So here you can see the radius on this. If the heel and toe of this are touching, there's about a quarter inch right now in between the mouth and the bottom of it. I want it to be about an eighth inch or so. So I'm going to make it a little bit tighter. And then we can see the radius on there has changed. Now what we can do is grab this and start going to town. Um, but the problem with that is it's very hard to control because if you rock too far forward, it's not going to cut. If you rock back, it's not going to cut. And so you're constantly trying to balance it. And so this is really a painful way to do it. And I don't normally suggest doing it that way. What I suggest is grabbing a carcass saw and cut down close to the line. Give it about a sixteenth inch or so away from the line. And do that every couple inches along the piece. And then once I've made several relief cuts along there, I'm going to come in with the chisel and I'm just going to remove the waste. Bevel down. And as long as your grain is straight, this actually goes really quickly to get it down fairly close to that line. And I'm going to go about halfway here. I don't want to go into that next one because I'll blow that out. I'm going to start back at the other side and chop out the other way. And in a matter of a couple minutes, we've basically gotten our curve. We just need to refine that down. And if you don't have a compass plane, what you can do is grab a round bottom spoke shave and then just use that to refine it back to your line. Just keep an eye on that line until you get close to it. But in this video, we're looking at a compass plane. Even though the spoke shave is a lot of fun to get it really close really quickly, 
Let's show you how to do it with a compass plane. Now again, I have it set so it's a little shy of that circle. It's going to make it a little flatter than I need it to be. And the reason for that is when you push down on it, it's actually going to deform the sole a little bit more and you'll actually get a little bit more flex than you would normally expect because of that movement in the gears. So we're going to start at one end and we're going to push down to the middle and we're going to go up just a little bit, but we're not going to go up onto the other side very much at all. The reason we don't want to go on the other side is that then we're going against the grain. And I'm going to keep doing that. I'm going to eyeball it and make sure that I'm not taking out too much wherever I, wherever I don't want it. But there. Now I'm not taking any shaving here unless I bring the blade all the way up. Then I'll take another shaving there. And that lets me know that that is the current radius of this blade. So I'm going to come around to the other side. I'm going to do the exact same thing over here. And now I can tell that my radius is exactly what it needs to be. I'm a little ways away from that line. We're about a sixteenth inch away from that line all the way around. So I know my radius is right. I just need to actually start backing it up a little bit and starting a little bit farther back on the line. That will basically take this whole circle and push it down a little ways. So we can start back here. Just do a couple passes. Starting all the way at the back. And there, now I'm right on my line. From here all the way around to here. I'm going to turn back around. I'm going to do the exact same thing over here. Keeping that radius the same. And I'm going to keep going until right there. See? Now I've hit the stop where I'm not cutting anything except for an occasional little wisp. That lets me know I'm down at depth and I've met the radius of the plane so that now that is exactly the radius I need. And we are nice and smooth all the way around. Just do one finish over here. Just get rid of any wisps there. Just like that, you have your curve. Perfectly smooth, perfectly planed, beautiful arch that has a nice clean radius that the eye can pick it up. So there you have it. In a matter of a couple minutes, you can get a compass plane to give you this really nice sloping smooth curve that is exactly what you're looking for and perfectly round so that you're not having to worry about going exactly to the line with the spoke shave and making sure that everything is exactly where you need. Yes, you can do that. This will take longer. Whereas with a saw, a chisel, and a compass plane, it really only takes three or four minutes to get this perfect curve just like that. No jigs to set up, nothing to do. Just crank your knob till you get to the right circumference you're looking for and you're ready to work. It is a really fun tool. You don't get to use it much. It's not a tool that is like uh, you've got to have in your shop. It is a tool that is nice to have. It looks cool on the shelf. It's a lot of fun to play with, but the times when you can use it are pretty few and far between. But when you can use it, it's well worth it. It's a lot of fun. So I hope you like this video. I'm sure there are a lot of other questions you'd like to ask. Please do so down in the comments below. I'd love to hear them and I'll answer as many as I can get to. And I do want to say a huge thank you to those of you who have supported the channel through buying t-shirts and card scrapers and joining on Patreon. You have really made this channel far more than it has ever been before. And I'm looking forward to growing it into the future. Thank you for that. If you'd like to find out more about that, there's links down below. And until next time, have a wonderful day.